सो ये लाइट इतनी ब्राइट क्यों है यू नो नाउ इज आई कैन स्टेप आउट विदाउट मेकअप एंड आई एम ऑल्सो थिंकिंग अबाउट माई नेक्स्ट आई फॉर ड्रेस एंड माई नेक्स्ट कर ऑप्शन थिंकिंग इंटीरियर डिजाइन सो एम नॉट ट्राई टू जज एनी वन आउट है but you know people who have not met me before tend to have this kind of an assumption about me and i also have been asked the same questions time and again so without deliberately trying to ignore it let me just put it straight and introduce myself hi i'm tahira kashyap a very proud wife of aishman khurana who is an actor who is also a proud husband of tahira kashyap who for the longest time didn't know what she wanted to do <laughs> so this is about my journey my life my identity crisis which has got nothing to do with my husband trying to figure out for himself or more so about me trying to figure out for the longest time you know i belong to that section of people who really don't know what they want to do i know that i have to stand up on my own feet and kind of earn so which meant doing small or jobs throughout college and university from being a promoter at an event management company to writing press releases uh, to working as an executive with a public relations company to writing radio scripts to working at all india radio as a news anchor I was doing my bit because I didn't want to pressurize my parents. Um, you know, my parents too have always been working. Um, I belong to a middle class family, like I said, where both the set of parents are working throughout. And one quick dinner date, one movie date, and a quick trip to Kosoli, the nearby hills, would exhaust us of our energy and, very honestly speaking, budget too. So uh, this being the case, I didn't want to pressurize them. At the same time, I'm dating this boy in college, who I marry later, and how could he pay for all the lunch dates? So I had an incentive for me to work. So this part of me was always clear, whether I liked the job or I didn't. I had to do it. But the other facet of my personality, which gave me tremendous happiness and joy and satisfaction, was theatre. In fact, all the three years that I studied here at GGDSC College as a BSc Biotechnology student, I represented my college youth youth festival each year, securing a position. So uh, that being it, uh, there was one thing that used to disturb us theatre enthusiasts. Uh, you know what would we do after college since there was no independent theatre group? Hence, all the colleges, all the students from the city colleges, we got together and we formed our own independent theatre group, group called Manch Tapa, and we insisted on calling it a professional theatre group because uh, for two reasons: one, we saw it as a source of uh, uh, you know potential income for future for further theatre aspirants. At the same time, we wanted to break its image away from it being associated with struggler's chai and sutta. So that being it, we were determined to stage our first play, which we did. It was conceptualized by me. It was called Socha Natha. The day comes we took to go theatre, a popular auditorium that we all know of in Chandigarh. So we book that stage. The audience comes. It's packed. It's full. The press has come to review us. The curtains go up. We perform. And the next day, the reviews not only ridicule and humiliate us, they tear us apart. But that doesn't dissuade us. So instead, we we just made a small minor change. So now, from a professional theatre group, we started calling ourselves Manch Tandran Amateur Theatre Group. <laughs> yeah, and we continue doing staging shows, uh, staging productions. Uh, most of them did well. Our group, uh, our batch, um, we we grew up. And theatre was still not a source of potential income, so most of us went to Bombay to try our luck. Few of us joined corporate jobs, and me, I was left confused as always. So I went to Punjab University, pursued my masters in mass communication and journalism, where again I picked up two jobs. One was at Shan P R, a public relations company, and the other one was very interesting. It also do with generating content about the places to visit in and around India. And with my travel expertise and with my parents' available time and budget, the maximum I had gone to was Jalandhar in Punjab and Manali in Himachal. So with a lot of, and I remember I was asked to write about the exotic palaces in Jaipur. So with a lot of research and a bit of description, a whole lot of uh, imaginative experience, I wrote the most creative pieces, which my bosses loved. God knows why, but I knew this is something that I didn't want to do, so I left, determined to open up my own public relations agency. Uh, with the help of my employers, Mrs. and Mr. Bonod at Shan P. R. S., I I uh, was determined to open up my agency. In the last few days of my university, went into setting up my one-room small office in Sector 15, setting up fax machine, telephone line, drawing out a prospective list of clients. And the last day of university, when it came, I straight away went from my campus into my office without a day's break. And the next day, the boy that I was dating, he left for Bombay to try his luck in acting. Both of us were determined. He was more so by passion, and me by the will of just doing something in life. 
and look at the nerve of me, the audacity. I get my business cards printed and I get CEO printed on it. Whereas the CEO is the only employee, employer and employee. <laughs> yeah. So from taking out the Xerox copies of the press releases that I wrote myself to actually delivering them at the various publication houses to following it up with the press uh, to making sure to actually picking up the standees of my clients and putting up at the stage at the point of event uh, to distributing the press kits and making sure the chai uh, that the press have, have their chai and pakoda. I did all. I put in my all. Uh, my clients grew. My agency grew. Now we were a team of three. <laughs> So, but determined, I want some more growth. So then I started putting up exhibitions and I made money. Uh, my first exhibition was a hit and I was more driven. And since my driving point was just making money and there was a heart and soul into it, I was bound to fall and fall did I. My next exhibition in Ludhiana was a huge disaster. Half of my exhibitors left me without paying me, paying me and the other half, I wish they had done the same. They did, they stayed back and hurled abuses at me for two continuous days and this is the heart of Punjab that I'm talking about guys this is Ludhiana the level of abuses so <laughs> so this is all I endured at the age of 23 and that day honestly I felt like taking my, away my life I wanted to put an end to it and I'm glad I did not so I come back to Chandigarh demotivated I look at my agency for the last time and I left and the next day the boy that I was dating he left for Bombay to try his luck in acting. Both of us were determined. He was more so by passion and me by the will of just doing something in life. And look at the nerve of me, the audacity. I get my business cards printed and I get CEO printed on it. Whereas the CEO is the only employee, employer and employed. <laughs> yeah. So from taking out the Xerox copies of the press releases that I wrote myself to actually delivering them at the various publication houses to following it up with the press uh, to making sure to actually picking up the standees of my clients and putting up at the stage at the point of event uh, to distributing the press kits and making sure the chai uh, that the press had, have their chai and pakoda I did all. I put in my all. Uh, my clients grew. My agency grew. Now we were a team of three. <laughs> So, but determined I wanted some more growth. So then I started putting up exhibitions and I made money. Uh, my first exhibition was a hit and I was more driven. And since my driving point was just making money and there was no heart or soul into it, I was bound to fall and fall did I. My next exhibition in Ludhiana was a huge disaster. Half of my exhibitors left me without paying me, paying me. And the other half, I wish they had done the same. They did, they stayed back and hurled abuses at me for two continuous days and this is the heart of Punjab that I'm talking about guys this is Ludhiana the level of abuses so <laughs> slow this is all I endured at the age of 23 and that day honestly I felt like taking my, away my life I wanted to put an end to it and I'm glad I did not so I come back to Chandigarh demotivated I look at my agency for the last time and I left when I joined Big Man 2.7 FM as a programming head um, and my small little station started doing really well. In fact, my seniors took notice of uh, the kind of content that is being generated and the targets that we are meeting. So no sooner did was I awarded the Programming Champ North Award, I got demotivated and I left. A couple of months down the line, I married the boy that I was dating for the past nine years and this was in 2008. So practically dating each other since we were in our diapers. So, <laughs> I come to Bombay, very happily married and settled, but equally lost and sinking. I was sinking, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Everybody around me in Bombay was on fire. You can understand that. Everybody knew what they wanted to do, but I was this lost person. So that's the time when I started, uh, you know, I, I, uh, uh, used, I, like I was saying, when you're sinking, you kind of tend to latch on to anything that is around you. So I joined Cursor Profile for a month and I left. I even had the audacity to audition for advertisements and for being an anchor. And this is one place I didn't leave. I, didn't leave. I was asked to leave. I was thrown out. I was miserable at it. <laughs> Thereafter, I started teaching at Bombay colleges. I was teaching mass communication and journalism since I had cleared my UGC net. Teaching, I like. I'm so like as much that I didn't feel like killing myself by jumping in front of a Mumbai local train. But I did like it as much that I would get into one of them to reach my workplace. So that being it, I gave two years of my life to it. 
um, just about when I was getting an excellent feedback from everywhere, I get demotivated and I left. Each time I left a job, it took a life out of me. I felt like I am this stupid, fickle, non-committal uh, the person, a person who is worthless, doesn't have any passion, there is no targets, no goals. I felt miserable about myself. And as usual, I was thinking even more. This is when I started writing, as that's what has kept me alive. I wrote three books. First was a novel, second was a collection of short stories. The third, the publisher approached me himself and I said, yes, I have made it. The publisher himself is asking about me and I said, okay, I'm ready to do it. He's like, yes, madam, you have to do it, but you have to write about your husband, his journey to Bollywood, and we call it Cracking the Code. Wow. So no points for guessing out of the three books which got the maximum traction I have once. Bringing you back to the same question. Who am I? What's my identity? In between all of this, I also managed to have a kid who perhaps was more focused than me, you know, sleeping time, massage time, crying time, feeding time, sleeping time, so focused. Whereas I, I was just all over the place and nowhere to be found. In fact, on the pretext that my husband was too busy for my son and me, I used to run back to Chandigarh. Bombay looked like this daunting city to me. Not that Chandigarh was any better, but I was being an escapist. But each time I would come back to Bombay to meet my husband, I would end up being pregnant. Yes, Punjabi hormones going really wild. So here I am, pregnant for the second time. I come back to Chandigarh and I say, enough! Yeah, like enough of being pregnant, that too. <laughs> but enough of sinking. No matter how much I was thinking, there was always a small, feeble voice inside of me that told me, just don't give up. So here, with me, with me being pregnant for the second time and my tummy bulging out for the second time, I take it on my to, onto myself that I must resurrect my theatre group which hadn't made a production in about 10 to 11 years. So me along with my friend Avril Gupta, another theatre member and a businessman, we kind of staged a production based on my second book, a collection of short stories. It was called Sold Out and Sold Out it was. I directed it. Um, we staged two shows at Tibor Theatre and two in Delhi. And it was life coming full circle for me. It was a redemption of sorts. Where at Tigo Theatre, when I was 19, I was ripped apart to here, being appreciated. I was loving it. But as soon as this nice feeling was sinking, I saw that everybody around me has moved on to their lives, to their businesses. And whereas I'm just standing there with my tummy growing bigger in size. <laughs> wow. I have my second baby. And I'm, I'm, I'm best with two happy, healthy babies for which I'm eternally grateful. And a very happy, healthy, wonderful husband and an equally sinking, wonderful sight to me. I was thinking more and more by the day because still now, still I don't know what I wanted to do. That's again when I took to writing again. I wrote scripts, movies, films, uh, short films, feature films. I kept writing, writing, writing. I also had it in me. I thought maybe I'll just take it around. I took it around only to be rejected and rejection I took way too seriously. So I wrote for five years with no hope of anybody seeing it, let alone appreciate it. I kept writing, writing till the time I reached a point where I used to cry throughout the night. You know, two minutes into crying, it exhausts you. And here I'm crying for nights all together. And morning I used to be this happy, bright, chirpy person because no matter how much of a loser you think you are, you can't look like a defeatist in front of your children. And this is when I knew I'm treading a very thin, dangerous line. I was going down. I was. I was just about trying to keep myself together. And this is when a beautiful practice came across my life. You know, every empowering philosophy talks about the same thing. It's just what makes most sense to you given the life state that you're at. Buddhism came my way and I started swimming. I remember a practitioner asked me, what is it that you want? I said, I can't tell you. She said, no, no, you please have to tell me. I don't know. I said, no, I can't tell you. She's like, yes, I can, yeah. I said, no, no, my goals, I can't tell you, I can't tell you. She's like, terrorist, you not I said, no, but you know, the universe has been fairly kind to me and I don't want to kind of, maybe my goals are too big. And till the time she told me the relativity is just in my head, there's nothing big or too small for the universe. And one last time she said it, say it. So I took deep breaths, <clears throat> calmed myself down. I said, and the small feeble voice inside of me that always told me don't give up, that emerged and said, I want to be a filmmaker, a director, a writer. Trust me, that was the first time in my life I was hearing those words for myself. And no sooner did I say that, I bawled my lungs out. I'm sure I scared her that day. 
for 15 20 minutes into more crying she says who's stopping you i said who's helping me she said did you even make this determination before i said no i didn't have it in me to acknowledge it to myself let alone the world i always suffocated my thoughts my goals my passion by my stupid conspiracy conspiracy theories something like whatever said out to make a short film people say are yaar actor ki bhi hai vel liye time pass kar liye worse my students ridicule it worse my students say hame kya padha diye aise to hum bhi bana le yaar worse it doesn't see the light of the day worse it sees the light of the day and rip the part like how my first play was when i was at the age of 19 and here i'm 34 there's something more at stake till the time i was told to dream to have goals and not just to have dreams and goals but to have the wisdom compassion and courage the wisdom to make the right choice the courage to see it through and the compassion to take everybody along you have the power to change your own destiny the reason why we are born is to strive to be happy not to suffer and really i need to tune myself to that because i really thought we want to, to suffer to endure no we born to be happy each day of our life should be towards that goal you know universe is like your personal bank account the amount of fortune that you can withdraw depends on your faith and faith means fighting light negative tendencies consistently and constantly this i was told this is what i did you know my passion my driving point my force everything what i wanted to do was always right in front of me but it was clouded by the lack of faith in myself in my talent in my identity in my existence and it took me 12 years to acknowledge to myself it's okay to have this goal it's okay you know for some my struggle is not struggle enough because i didn't have sitting on the platforms and eating of tiger biscuits but some struggles are internal and if not more they equally difficult to conquer and when i set out to conquer i made my first short film called toffee which was selected and screened at the mami film festival at the film fair short film awards at the syndicate amsterdam film festival at the bahamas international film festival at the dhaka international film festival at the jakarta international film festival at the thailand international film festival where it was the only indian entry and the only one to be bracketed and screened along with the cannes winner Yeah, I have something small to share, very personal, very intimate. When the Taiwan International Film Festival people called upon me and invited me to attend the festival, this was the first time in my life somebody was spending their money on my travel and stay. It felt nice, and because the festival was so prestigious, me and I, me and my husband decided to attend it. And of course, he had to pay for his travel and stay. Once we reached there, he boarded off first and started looking around for anybody holding a placard to his name. And by virtue of habit, I started doing the same thing till the time he comes running to me and I ask him what happened. He takes me by my arm. I say, Are you okay? He takes me to, uh, by my arm and takes me in front of a man who's wearing a black suit with a black tie with black goggles, holding a placard that said, "Tahira Kashyap." <laughs> It was a proud moment, but it became an emotional one when I saw in my partner's faith can move mountains, and this I really saw. So here I am, standing in front of you at the right page of 35, and I can proudly share that my life has just begun, my career has just begun. You know, there are some 18 to 20 year olds who have already started doing this, and I've started out as young as that. To them, I want to embrace them and tell them that life is beautiful and there's enough for everyone. And also, I know there might be some of you who still haven't figured out what they want to do, or have still emerged, and are probably fighting their own battles. To them, I want to give a big, big, big hug and tell them that life is beautiful. There is enough for everyone, and each one of us has a unique mission, and it's never too late. Also, I want to share that I'm also working towards my goal of making my first feature film. And uh, I want to share that I recently signed my first feature film as a director um, with Ellipsis, which are the makers of Nija and Tumhari Sulu. And I have written the script too, and it's going to go on floors next year. <laughs> so, from someone who didn't have it in her to acknowledge it to herself, to me being here and just sharing that that's what I'm doing is something very big for me. It's a dream come true for me. I really wish for my my entire being, my entire heart, the whole of my heart, that each one of us have goals and dreams and not just small, big, enormous goals, 
goals that only just, just not only bring happiness to us, but bring happiness to the lives around us. Goals that add value to our lives, but also add values, value to the lives around us. Goals that help us become the best, best possible version of ourselves. Because that's precisely why we are born. Thank you so much.